Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a fully scoped and resourced project plan and save it as a template to be used over and over again. So I'm going to create a blank project and I'm going to change some of these settings so I can see this a bit better. So if I go into format the Gantt chart and select font size 14, that'll just make everything a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll go a bit bigger than that even. Go 16. And then I'm going to get rid of the timeline. You can do that in options if you don't want that on. I don't want that timeline displayed. So now you can see everything. Let's just do um, plan A. And then I'll just do phases. Phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, for example. And then I'll go plan B and then repeat that process. So I'll just copy these, no details on them just yet. So copy those and then just paste them down below. And then I'll do plan C. And the same thing, copy those three, copy and just paste them below. So you create your plan, what you think is generic. And then you save it as a template. So if I just indent these, I'll go back to task tab and select indent and do the same for these three. So the plan, each plan is sort of a summary task like that. And now I'm going to insert a task at the top there. So I'll just go insert task and then call it projects. And then I can indent everything underneath projects. So projects, and I'm highlighting row 2 down to 13, indenting that, and it gives me that. Now, I've got this set to um, automatic schedule down the bottom there, you can see. I don't want this to be typed over. You can type it. I want these uh, summary tasks to sort of like summarize the tasks underneath and give me a score on the door. I don't really want people to be able to type on that. You you can type on that, which is not great because you then change it to a manual task. You need to watch out for that. What I mean is if I go three there, look, that flicks over to a manual task. And no matter what I do here, so if I put four there, it hasn't changed that to four. It's still sitting as three. And I don't want that to happen. So I make sure that's on automatic. Put that back to automatic. Now it's picking up that four days. And I'm going to go down and change some of these durations like so. Now, if there's a question mark, it sees that question mark as an anticipated duration. So you, if you don't want to see question marks, you need to physically type a duration. Even if it is um, one day, you still should type one day over it. So it's not got that question mark. Now, let's do some links. I want, let's highlight these three and just do a chain link on that. So they all come across like so. I'll do the same, these three. Little chain link and these three. So they all follow on always. Obviously, these start dates are something that you can change in the actual project tab in project information. So when you do save this as a, a template, this is basically what you want people to change the actual start date because it wouldn't be always that date. So I'll cancel that off and let's have a look at the Gantt chart. I'm just going to double click on the white area to format this slightly and go into where it says text. I want the name, the task name to appear on the right of each of these bars as you can see there. And if you want the task name to appear on the summary bars, if you go back into that, you have to click onto the summary one and then go down and do it. Um, name, let's see if I've got that right one. Yeah, so you've got project, plan A, plan B, and plan C. So everything is named as you would want it. Now we need to do some resources. So we'll go down to the resource sheet down here. And let's add some people. So we'll go, now there's two options here. You can go for people like Bill and Ben. And then you get the full functionality of project, or you can do appointments. So for this one, I'm going to do appointments. I'm going to go trainer, um, manager, 
admin person. So they're the people. So trainer, if you put that to 200%, means there's two trainers and there's one manager and there's one admin person. And let's do some materials. So if I go Microsoft Office, M for material, and we'll go paper. So we can do um, paper. That's also material. Now let's put some costs in here. So let's say they are on ten pound and fifteen. Uh, I always use these figures. Well, well out of date now. People are on a lot more than that. Pulling that down, and let's say for every time we use the Microsoft Office license, it's going to cost us a hundred pounds, and every time we use a pack of paper, it's going to cost us one pound. All the standard calendars can stay the same, but now we need to go back to the Gantt chart and allocate resources. So up to the resource tab. Assign resources. This box floats on the screen so you can click between the two. So on phase one, I want um, a trainer, assign a trainer, so that's just one trainer. I want a manager, assign a manager, like so. I also want two copies of Microsoft Office, so that's one. I need to change that to two. Two, 200 pound that should be. And then paper. A signed paper, uh, it comes up as one pound, but let's say we use a pack per hour. So I'm going to go one forward slash HR. That'll give you eight pound. That should be, um, it's more than eight pound, eight pound a day. Now that's right, 32 pound. I don't know what I'm doing there, 32 pounds. So we've got that on there. So let's pick a different task. And uh, we'll just say the manager is going to be on that one. And the manager is going to be on that one. So we're resourcing this. And then let's do the same for all three of these. Let's just jump ahead a little bit so we can go those three. In fact, all of it. I'm going to assign all of it, everything to that task. And you get the cost coming in there. Paper, I'll just leave it on one pack. Same for that, just to speed things up. So what we've got here is some red men, which means we've got over allocated resources. Now, what I want to do on this is at the minute we've got plan, plan B going at the same time as plan A and C, and I want them to be indented. So if I click onto this task and link it to task five, that should get rid of that. And if I click on this task and link it to task nine, that should move that across and get rid of all the red men. I could have gone to leveling and leveling probably would have done that, but I, I like to control it myself, but that's the plan. And I don't need to do any more detail than this because this is just gonna be the starting point for your template. So now what I need to do, now I'm happy with that, is save this as a template I haven't saved a baseline or anything like that. And we haven't used any resources or nothing like that. If you go to the, the view tab, you can have a look at the impact of the cost if you want, if you change the table to the cost table. So that's what this project is going to cost from a starting point. I'll put that back to entry. entry. Now I want to save it as a template. Now, before I do that, if you've just installed project, you might not have a default templates folder. So I'll show you where you do that. If I go to file down to options and then save, you need to point this to, I've pointed it to custom office templates and that's where my templates are gonna go. If there's nothing in there, you won't be able to find the template after we've done this. So that's okay. Cancel that off. Then you go file save save and it's going to ask you for a name and i'm just going to call it project general spell it right project general now it needs to be a template so we go in there we just select project template and it's coming into the, the right place because that's what's in options there's one there from earlier so project general, save. Now it asks you if you want to save this information as well. This is if you've sort of 
use some stuff. Um, none of this I'm going to tick. I'm just going to leave it like that. Save. And then if I close this down, Control W, and get ready to use it, I go File, not Open, File, New. And then it will show me that folder, Personal. Now, if you're on a network or working with other people, that can be done by IT and set up. So it would say, in my case, it's easy. And then everybody would have access to that. It would be a shared folder where people can get access to it. But in there will be that file that we've just created, Projects General. Open that up. And then that drops that in onto the screen, exactly the same state as we saved it. But it's now called Project 3. It hasn't got a name. It's not called Projects General. It's a copy of it. And if I just, for example, mess this up, let's go back to Tasks. So I've colored that up. And if I save it, I'll just save it. It's not going to be saved as Project General. Um, it's going into Documents, look. I'll just call it Steve for now. That's a complete separate copy. If I want this um, to open it again, I can do so. I can just go File and Open. File, not open, New. Get another copy of it, Project General. And it is back to how it was, the original, not changed. But it is another copy of it. So it's coming out as a second copy of that template. So that's how templates work. It's the same process in all of Microsoft Office programs. You save it in the templates folder and you open it. You use it by going File New, not File Open. And then you've got a structure to start from in terms of Microsoft Project or Word or Excel, whichever one you're doing. And it speeds up the sort of data entry process. And also in terms of project, it's giving people a plan to follow. This is what you need to do. This is how our projects work. So they've already got the starting point. So that's all I want to talk about on this little video. So hopefully that was of use. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you in the next one.